Hello, and welcome to Nikkor Store YouTube channel's first ever concept breakdown video. Normally, we have only done breakdowns of new product releases, which we hope are both informative and entertaining. However, today, we are launching a brand new series where I, the soon-to-be-deposed Nikkor Store narrator, explore some of the various concepts that are relevant to the industry in a more relaxed and free format. In addition to dodging frequently asked questions and providing standard PR platitudes in a vain attempt to seem more relatable to strangers on the internet. Thus, for the inaugural concept breakdown video, we will be going over Candela. If you consider yourself a true enthusiast of flashlights, then you are probably no stranger to the words Candela, Lux, and Lumen, as well as phrases such as please stop pointing that at my face and get a real hobby. These three words are all SI units that are used in the field of photometry, which should be the study of why those two O's are pronounced differently. However, like most other arithmetic concepts, they are both denotative and pure, yet they have been viciously kidnapped and co-opted and mercilessly prostituted by the 21st century charlatans we refer to as marketing, such as yours truly, and bastardized to the point where people argue about it on the internet. Just stop and think about that for a second. Mathematics is humanity's symbolic representation of the invisible constants. They are purely conceptual coefficients we attach to the tangible as to minimize redundancy. When the first caveman went out and noticed five trees in the field and saw the five fingers on his hands, although he probably would have had six because polydactylism is the dominant expression, and he noticed five berries on a bush, he knew that all of these things were definitely different. Those are trees, those are fingers, and those are berries. But there was something there, something invisible that made them all the same. So he came up for a name for this invisible something that made the differenty different things similar and decided to call it five. And this blew all the other cavemen's minds. And they burned the first caveman at the stake for being a wizard. So why do I bring all of this up? Well, I vaguely remember seeing a comment on one of our social media posts which denounced the Lumen values as a false prophet and exalted Candela values as the truest, most objective metric for discerning what is the best flashlight, which led to a very colorful discussion. Well, laser pointers have the highest Candela values, and like flashlights, they are just machines, mechanical devices that convert the chemical potential energy into electric energy into visible light. So, in an effort to shed some light on what I thought should not have been a volatile topic, I will be going over the origins and history of Candela. So, what is Candela? The first recorded note in history was the phrase, Yes I Candela, which was the catchy prominent campaign slogan used by the first South African president, Nelson Mandela. Candela derives from the English standard, candle power. One candle power was the amount of light produced by the flame of a single pure spermaceti candle weighing one-sixth of a pound and burning at the rate of 120 grains per hour. Spermaceti, of course, is the white waxy material collected from sperm whales. Thank goodness those words were in that exact order. <laughs> Germany, Austria, and different parts of Europe use the Hefner curves, a unit of luminous intensity based on the output of the Hefner lamp. This unit of light was defined as the light produced by the Hefner lamp, burning amyl acetate with a 40 mm flame height. This light unit was then adopted by the German gas industry in 1890 as the Hefner Einheit, long before the German gas industry's PR disaster. <laughs> Hefner Einheit has actually nothing to do with Fahrenheit. Turns out, Einheit just means unit in German, so Hefner Einheit means Hefner unit, and Fahrenheit was named after Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit, who came up with the temperature scale we know today. Now, as it turns out, whales are incredibly difficult to catch, like 700 pages difficult. Unless you are Japanese, and then you corral them into a cove and go full Zulu warrior on those little sh**. And physics professors were also starting to get annoyed when the boys in the back of the room kept giggling every time they said the word spermaceti. So, it became clear the world would need to adopt a new standard for measuring luminous intensity. This is where Jules-Louis-Gabriel Viol 
came along and based the new standard of luminous intensity on the light emitted by one square centimeter of platinum at its melting point, and just in case people would forget that he was an egotistical Frenchman, decided to name this new unit after himself. Something about 19th century Frenchmen and insisting on telling the rest of the world what significant units to use. However, credit where credit is due. The light intensity measurement of the viol was due to the Planck radiator effect, and was thus independent of the construction of the device. For instance, the intensity produced by the flame of a spermaceti candle might be different if the environment was oxygen rich or poor, or if the white waxy material collected was contaminated, because Mr. Whale had a bout of heavy drinking the night before, or Mrs. Whale usually spits. Okay, that is actually the worst. This new method designed by Viel was far more consistent and according to Wikipedia, around the 19th century high purity platinum was widely available and easily produced. Thus the Commission Internationale de l'Éclairage Commission Internationale d'Éclairage or in English, the International Commission on Illumination and the CIPM Comité International des Poids et Mesures Comité International des Poids et Mesures and, if you translate that from Cartoon Sexual Predator to English, it would be the International Committee for Weights and Measures. In 1946, declared that the value of the new candle is such that the brightness of the full radiator at the temperature of solidification of platinum is 60 new candles per square centimeter, with centimeter spelled with an RE. This was then ratified by the 9th CGPM, which is the Conférence Générale des Poids et Mesures. Conférence Générale des Poids et Mesures. Which, if you translate from having been able to mass produce a decent car to English, would be the General Conference on Weights and Measures. Then in 1967, the 13th CGPM thought new candle. We were really bad at naming things. And changed the unit's name to what we now know as the Candela in addition to specifying the atmospheric pressure being applied to said platinum. Thus, candela was born. A candela is the luminous intensity in the perpendicular direction of a surface 1 600,000th square meter of black body at the temperature of freezing platinum under a pressure of 101,325 newtons per square meter. But that is not the end of the story. For what are scientists if not the most fastidious of characters? They were not satisfied with the fluctuations of the Planck radiator effect at high temperatures. So, in 1979, the 16th CGPM decided that the new definition of candela would be the luminous intensity in a given direction of a source that emits monochromatic radiation of frequency 540 times 10 to the 12th hertz and has a radiant intensity in that direction of 1 683rd watt per steradian. This, of course, marked the final big change that brings us to the definition of candela we use today, because no longer was it defined by the mechanism of production, but was now a true value that expressed the end product. So, what does all of this have to do with flashlights? Well, to put it simply, Candela is equal to lumen divided by 2 pi times 1 minus the cosine of the apex angle over 2. And if that was not simple enough, candela is the base measurement for describing luminous intensity. It tells you how bright a light source is relative to its angle. Imagine if you will that instead of light being this inscrutably complex electromagnetic radiation, with the confusing perhaps it is a wave sometimes, sometimes it feels like a particle type dynamic, then instead it's just these 10 circles. These 10 balls represents lumen, which is the total light output from the source. And because of the inverse relationship between angle and candela, you can see that as the angle gets smaller and smaller the balls become more densely packed. One could arrive to the same intuitive conclusion by looking at the equation. You can remove this, this, and this, because at the end of the day, those are constants. And assuming that lumen values stay consistent, you can see because angle is positioned in the denominator, it has an inverse relationship with candela. Obviously, this is a gross oversimplification because cosine has a periodicity which does an actual wave. But fortunately, any real-world implications in the context of flashlights 
happen in this zone, between about 100 degrees to 5 degrees, 100 degrees being the widest of wide flood beams, and 5 degrees being the throwiest of North America at League of Legends World Championships throw long throw flashlights. So, if we were to keep lumens or total light output constant, and just change the angle, you can see that candela changes inversely to the apex angle. A thousand lumen with an apex angle of 90 degrees yields about 543 candela. A thousand lumen with an apex angle of 45 degrees yields about 2,090 candela. A thousand lumen with an apex angle of 22.5 degrees yields about 8,282 candela. Thus, we can estimate about a 6.61 apex angle on the new Nightcore P30 because it sports a thousand lumen max with a reported 95,500 candela. So, how would I use candela ratings? Well, if we operate under the assumption that you have the lumen value, which is most consistently provided by manufacturers, then candela ratings are inversely related to the flashlight's light beam's apex angle. And from there you can further deduce the relative throw that this light might be capable of. And from the apex angle you could further extrapolate the beam's profile. For example, envisioning the light density and the field of illumination you would get from this light, such as the spill and any harsh white spots in the center. That concludes the concept video breakdown on Candela. I hope you enjoyed this silly little excursion on the origins and history of Candela, and hope that it was both informative as well as entertaining. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the Nightcore Store's YouTube channel. Thank you.